Audio testing, one, two, a one, two. Check, check, mic check, a check, a check, one, two. Dig smells like poo, a one, a two, a three into the four. This is Fragbox, there's no customers in the store. Oh, you never knew March. Okay, that's enough with the silliness, enough with the wrapping that is horrible. What's going on, Reefing Fan March here, Fragbox TV. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. What is this? This is a, this is a television show that happens to be on YouTube. Kavita's Breaking Bones in the back, uh, WSIB. And it specializes, I mean, we specialize in these things. These lovely little boxes of glass filled with salty water. And if you're looking for one of them and you live in England, in the UK, check out AAC, Advanced Aquarium Consultancy. They just got a shipment of our Reef Casa tanks. And I'm actually going to be coming early April if you guys want to meet up. Uh, 5th to the 8th, something like that. I'll post more details about that later. Okay, what are we going to do in today's video? We're going to do one of our glue down videos. So let me show you what this tank looks like now. Let me show you what it looked like before because it's really come a long, long way. Check out how far it's come. This is... Hmm... Hmm, how long ago is it? This is 10 months ago. Basically bare bones, not a lot going on. And look how far the tank has come in just under a year. It's doing really well. Everything's starting to fill in. I have a couple little issues that I'm going to touch on today. And one of them is the acans down here in the bottom. I am i don't want to say I'm known for my acans because that just sounds weird. I'm known for being March. Um, but I always get this question here. Why are your acans so puffy? Number one, high magnesium. Number two, usually low flow, but the Nero 5s are on a little bit higher flow. Number three, feeding. Da 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 da, March's super secret coral sauce. You can actually buy this online now. We call it coral curry. These things love to eat. But you see this yellow golden A can right back there? Look at that. No puffiness. I have a couple of ideas why. So, I'm going to pull out, see these purple sponges? I really like them, but I suspect that they are starting to bother it. I'm gonna see if I can get them a little bit further away from this toadstool that's stretching funny. Look at this toadstool over here. He started down on the bottom, and look how his stalk has just extended. He wants more light, just the same way a tree will reach through the canopy of other trees to get higher. So he wants to get higher up, and look at the stretch. Look at the neck on this giraffe of a coral. So that's gonna be step one. What I'm gonna do in a second is set up the tripod here, and I'm gonna to talk to you as I sort of scape and pull that out. Second, I have this beautiful tabling red Acropora that came from an Australian order, and it's just looking so, so good. Where the hell I'm gonna put this piece? This I couldn't tell you. We are pretty much packed to the, to the brim in this tank. Uh, I don't know, we're gonna kind of figure out as we go. This piece is for sale, I love it, but it's too big, so if you like, you can grab this on our website right now. That's a long tentacle plate coral. And you'll see sometimes in some of the descriptions of the pieces, I'll write long tentacle plate coral and then in brackets from March's display tank. The same goes with this Indiophilia. Nothing wrong with it, it's just, it's big and it's time for a change. I kind of want the space back and because it's so limiting. This tank, people always ask us, is a custom, I think it's like 80 to 90 gallons, 48 inches this way, 28 on this side, 16 tall, two Hydra 32 HDs, two Nero 5s, which are actually gonna come off soon because I'm gonna try something else for flow. Not that there's anything wrong with them. I'm just a, kind of like a geek. Like I call myself a hardware junkie. I really, really like new equipment. I like unboxing. I like reviewing. I like everything that is dry and makes the systems work as much as I like. What are you looking at? <laughs> as much as I like what's inside the aquariums. Um, okay, sorry, getting distracted by the dog. Finally, or not finally, I have some suspicularia here and I'm gonna find a forever home in this tank. I absolutely love this coral. It's like what I always call it is Xenia's long tentacle cousin because it's soft like Xenia, it's as easy to keep, it's as fast growing, but hello, Ben guy, it's not invasive. And what I mean by that is it's really, really easy to take off your rocks. You're not really committed to it the way you are Xenia. You can kind of see there at the bottom of your screen, it sends out these like feet or maybe that's not a good way to describe it, like tentacles and from those they'll spread. Xenia, I find, let me see if I have some of the tanks here. Oh, by the way, before I get distracted by my own distractions, we have a lot of pieces that are, uh, I wouldn't say on sale. I just usually, if I'm gonna take the time to add corals to the site, this is our what you see is what you get tank for our website. 
I'm usually picking like the nicest pieces, very expensive pieces because it is time consuming, but I realize that the site may just be not super inclusive to people that can't spend maybe 50 to $100 a frag. So what I've gone and done is set up a new rack here. So if you see a B in front of the number, they're typically not gonna be, they're gonna start as low as $5 and the frags will go up to like 10, maybe, maybe, maybe 15. B, it's, I don't know why I feel weird telling you guys, but it's a little inside thing. B for us means budget. So it's for people that are on a budget. And we had our club frag box meet uh, here. If you got to attend, awesome, hanging out with you guys. If not, come to the next one. And we gave away a $100 gift card to somebody that could give one piece of briefing advice in five words, like almost like a haiku and a sentence. And one of the winners was, it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to, I don't know how many words that was. Anyways, he won. And it's so true. It doesn't have to be expensive. So some of these budget pieces over here, they're just that. They're, they're a little bit less expensive, but look, they're not, there's nothing particularly wrong with them. This is a beautiful outer chaos, but it's small. So we sell it for a lot less. Hammer coral, I swear to God, I'm gonna get to the glue down part. This is just how my mind works and you guys are along for the ride. You know, things like this, little armor, get, um, armor of God, some favia, some bird's nest. So look for those on the site, they move quickly. I had someone recently email me, says, March, I can't stand your site. I always go on it and before I'm able to check out the pieces that I want sell. I'm sorry, man, you know what? This is a problem I've heard over the years. This is something I haven't been able to fix. This is part of the curse of success, I guess. And if you don't move quick on the site, you guys will see. Even sometimes you're just thinking about it or as you're filling up your cart, there's someone out there with a trigger figure that isn't hesitating or asking, hey babe, uh, come over here. Do you think that we should get this? It pfft, gone, someone bought it. Or uh, honey, do you think we could add another? Pfft, gone. Don't hesitate. If, if you want it, it's on the site. Um, jump on it. Finally, finally, there's a lot of talking to get to uh, a little bit of gluing. When this thing's out of the way, behind it, look at that, there's a red goniopora. So how do I decide to add corals to the tank? Um, I try my best not to. I'm very limited on space and I have, I'm, I'm you know that kid in the candy store analogy? I think I may be the greatest expression of that single saying as a hobbyist and having free reign over the whole store because I own it. So technically all the corals are mine um, and having contacts and sources to order from all over the world. So I try to limit myself one piece of coral per order, per wholesale order. I try to just limit myself to just one. Um, I have failed. That is what this video is about. I have not one, but two. So this Gondipora, for whatever reason, just really speaking to me, and uh, I want to set up a new rock, sort of like a flower pot, Gondipora rock, right here. I'm going to move him out of the way, I'm going to move him out of the way, I am going to stop talking at some point, and I'm going to go through here and just pick um, maybe a little boulder or something from some of the different rocks that we offer in the store. And then I'm gonna set it up. If in the last video you guys got confused because it was repeat, yes, sometimes I make mistakes when editing. You have to go to 14 minutes to catch the second vlog update. Basically, it's just giving you a glimpse into our new reef castle wall that's slowly coming along here at the front of the store. If you didn't know, I am also a drywaller, painter, framer, electrician, plumber, tiler, floors, trim, doors, windows, roofing. I'm a man of it all. I enjoy getting busy with my hands, so. Um, if you are a taper, please disregard my hack job. Uh, but yeah, it's coming along. Our coffee bar is coming, so you guys can enjoy coffee when you come in the store. And this is sort of gonna be a spot to showcase some of our new products, and I'll do another video basically just uh, on that. New display tanks coming, new models coming of Reef Casas, Peninsula models, those are gonna get set up here. But I don't wanna get too ahead of myself because that's a whole other chapter. I haven't even got around to editing the videos from Korea. I have some amazing stuff to share with you guys from there. Okay, that's enough, let's get into it. I'm gonna stick this on the tripod. You guys didn't know I had one, huh? Look at this. I do have one. All right, engage tripod. Is this not amazing? The camera is not shaking. Did you guys ever think that was possible? I didn't. And then I got this thing. Okay, what am I using? Uh, gloves, because I'm a little bitch and my hands get dry from the salt. That's really the only reason why I wear the gloves. I absolutely love this stuff, but I, I think, I think that it just might be encroaching a little bit too much. I'm just using some stainless steel tweezers here. I'm gonna pull it out. Maybe I can save it. Somebody want a piece of this sponge? If you're after purple sponge, sponge is usually, I can't say that. Some sponges are, they're a sign of 
like a mature tank. You're not going to find this in a new tank. And they're just filter feeders. You know, I kind of feel bad taking them out, killing them. I'm going to save it in a basket. So if you come in the store, like in the next couple days after seeing this and you want the sponge, just ask for it. And uh, if it's still here, I'll give you some. This was probably one of the puffiest pieces in this tank. So I'm just going to continue to clean around it. I get a lot of people asking me recently how to get rid of hair algae. And this, what I'm doing right now, imagine this sponge was hair algae. Manual removal is so, so effective and underrated. I think a lot of people just want like a bottled solution. What I'm doing now is just checking underneath to see if I can see anything that maybe is bothering it. And I'm not seeing anything obvious yet, but let's keep looking. Maybe I can show you on the camera. If you want to get your Akens Puffy, look at your magnesium. So I find a lot of people follow what it says on the bottle. So that being like Red Sea, you see a little bit of loose tissue here, but that's not really any cause for concern. A lot of brands say 1300. And I guess, I don't know where they got that number. I think a lot of these companies, they're not actually hobbyists. And more and more as I travel the world and meet people and connect and go to events, I'm not trying to shit talk anyone. It's just very smart business people that happen to start aquarium companies. They don't have one at home. There's a few out there. They've never actually kept a salt water tank. Now I find that fucking insane. Okay, sorry. I, that's, I won't swear anymore. I told you guys I wasn't going to swear on the channel. It's just I could not hold in the F-bomb for that one. How do you get into this without having a tank? Anyways, they do. And um, if you look at magnesium levels in oceans, some of them are 1300. It varies from ocean to ocean. Maybe that's where that number comes up. I, anything lower than 1300 for me, danger zone. I want to see it around 1500 parts per million. And I like to test with my favorite test kit, which is the Aqua Forest Magnesium Test Pro. I'm not crazy about the Hanna one. They do make some good test kits. I'm just pulling out some dead shells as I talk to you here. Um, that being like the alkalinity and the Hanna Phosphorus Ultra Low Parts Per Billion. I'll say that again and I'll say it in slow motion. Hanna phosphorus ultra low ultra low phosphorus actually parts per billion that one is worth getting nitrate high range calcium mm, it's okay so i'm not seeing anything that should be bothering it the magnesium i checked was high I actually just text hey how's it going uh, alkalinity calcium all the levels are within reason and where i want them so maybe what i'll do in order to kind of do a process of elimination and see if um, see if that spot was well. That's the weird thing. It was here for so long, and it was happy. So what changed? What changed? Salt's good. Flow is, hasn't changed. Feeding hasn't changed. There's no new fish, so there shouldn't be anything picking on it. Um, the lights haven't changed. I haven't changed anything in the tank really. So really, no reason. So I'm a little bit stumped. So what I'm going to do is just move it over here to the corner, to where it's going to be even under lower light and lower flow. And I'm just going to let it hang out and try this different spot. I'm going to put back the feather duster when I'm done the video. And then I'm going to find out where the heck this red acro is going to go. Because I really want to keep it. I really have no room. This is going to be quite a tricky one here. Okay, so off camera, I actually just built this little rock using the TIA method, which is just some BRS glue and um, some Instaset, also from BRS. But why I'm adding another rock here is because I want to make an isolated flower pot island. I kind of want to take them off the rock. They do have a little bit of a sting and they do well right here. So I kind of want to give a little more room for them to grow. And I keep finding different ones that I want to keep. And I'm basically out of space on that rock work there. So my only solution is to uh, add some more rock. So this is going to be Ghani Island where I can just kind of do their thing. They're not going to sting each other. They're not going to bother anyone. And again, that's where they happen to do well, I have a customer actually behind me who just walked in and said, if you are ever, like he was looking at a mushroom on the site, how long did you wait before it was gone? Sorry? The mushroom that you were, you were thinking about getting, how long before someone bought it? Oh, it was gone. So when March posted all this stuff for the frag sale, I went online. I should have pressed click. Shut up. I ran right here. Instead of click. Hold up. Now he's saying shit. I'm I mean, shit. I mean, poop. Sorry, I'm not going to swear, kids. Yeah, poop. So that poop. is, that is now flower pot. Island. I'm still in a little bit of a dilemma. Where is this going to go? This is going to grow tall. This is going to get long. And I'm thinking maybe top left corner just because I already have soft corals up there and they won't really be bothered by one more addition. And then finally, acro. 
Okay, so finally I moved the uh, endothelia that was right in the center of the screen there. So that gives me a little bit of space and I think I'm going to do something a little bit different. I think I'm going to put this red one right there and kind of create sort of like an acro overhang towards this side of the glass. Uh, why? I don't know, because that's what I'm feeling. I hope that the color stays so it's a nice kind of dark ruby red right now. So I hope I don't lose any color by going with a lower par. But, you know, this isn't such a shallow tank. It's not like I have a lot of variation. I have, you know, up here or here. Those six or seven inches, I don't think they're going to make such a huge difference. So a lot of times we say, put this coral under high light or high flow. What does that mean? What does that mean, high light or high flow? What, what numbers are we going off of here? So I've used a par meter to kind of figure out what the lights are set at. If you're ever wondering and you want the Hydra 32 HD program that I'm running, you can go search on YouTube. I've done two videos now on uh, the exact schedule. So I think that's the spot. I'm not married to it. I can always move it. Even if you are married, you can always get divorced. Just like March, I'm gonna stop making jokes and I'm gonna get to work now. Okay, thinking like that. You see my vision? I think that'll look cool. It'll kind of create an overhang, and I like it. I think that's a good spot. If I can get it to stick with the glue, that'd be great. And if not, then I'm gonna go heat up some D&D &D Epoxy, which is my preferred brand, or Aqua Stick from Two Little Fishies. Shout out Julian Sprung. I know you don't watch my videos, but if I say it enough times, maybe I can manifest you into commenting on one of them, or actually right there. That might be a good one. If I can get it in the spot. The thing is, it's got weight. It wants to drop down. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking right here. I think that's going to be the spot. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it. I'm going to do a little bit of damage with the glue. When I glue the bottom of the acro, you're kind of killing it in that one spot, but it's going to heal around it. And then if I did a good job, hopefully it's actually going to heal onto the rock and form a, uh, it's going to form a base. It's going to attach to the rock. It's going to encrust until it feels comfortable. And then if it does what I suspect tabling corals to do, it's going to table outwards. And I like this spot too, because there's nothing really here and it's not going to shadow anything. It's, there's only sand underneath it, so I'm not losing any real estate by putting it up higher. Um, see, yeah, that doesn't want to stick. I may have to just go grab some epoxy. I'm using the BRS super thick glue, and that's the glue that I use for 99% of things until I encounter something like this. It's just got a little more weight. Uh, no, I don't know why I'm resisting the epoxy so much, because then I'm really stuck with it. You know what, that's why. This you can always snap right off, Oh, never mind. I got lucky. That's the spot. I like it there. It even leaves me a little bit of real estate behind. I got a little bit of red cyano here. If you have some, it's not the end of the world. You know, it's just a place where I'm getting a dead spot. The flow is just not able to get to it. The way the tank's set up, it's a peninsula, so you're always going to run into flow challenges because I don't want to see any pumps, obviously, here. But on that side, I want to keep it uh, unobstructed. I don't want to see wires. Keep it nice and clean. So just by nature of the beast, you're going to end up with a dead spot. And that happens to be my spot right in there. But look, now I got a little garden, a little thing I could add, maybe some zoas or something that will do well under medium light, medium flow. Finally, this suspicularia. Hmm. Actually, what if I get crazy and I just leave it on Ghani Island just to add some height? No, I think I want some Gorgonians there. I like when there's little sort of islands placed throughout with gorgs and you create almost like its own tiny little micro rock ecosystem. I know I'm not making sense, but as that rock builds out and I add more pieces, I think it might make a little more. This one. I think I'm gonna go with my original idea. Front and center, I'm gonna run into issues here because he's gonna to touch this uh, green slimer. He's not gonna be happy if he grows this way. This is quite a fast growing coral. So I wanna go somewhere that will be easy to manage. And I don't know why, but I feel like back here, it's just, this is sort of soft dominated. I think you can see off to the right of the screen. I'll move the tripod so you can actually get a glimpse of it. But I think that's, that's a good spot right there. That's where I'm feeling it. I don't have any commentary. I wish there was some way you guys so yeah, it's no stupid. Yeah, absolutely. But that's not how this YouTube works in this day and age. I think that's a good spot. It's going to grow tall. Even if it grows into the other ones, I don't expect any real coral warfare. And I think that's about it. I'll go ahead and glue it. It's kind of getting boring. I think watching it just grew. Um, I'm pretty happy with that layout. So that's one, two corals added. No, one flower pot, one acro and one suspicularia trading for long tentacle plate and the other one. So it kind of took out two, 
large ones, added three smaller ones, and I think this is going to be really, really cool as it fills out and becomes its own sort of island. I'm doing the same thing over here with some macroalgae, so we have this different kind of grape calerpa, and I just want to give it a chance to kind of grow and do its thing without affecting everything that's going uh, over here on this rock. Okay, I think that's it. I'm just going to wrap it up by putting this elegance, sorry, that's not elegance, I tricked myself, that's a fox coral. I'm going to tuck them under the rock, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. You felt it was useful or helpful. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you guys back here on the next episode of Fragbox TV. Bye for now.